Okay, so, so far we have divided up our infrastructure between production and staging in a few ways. And next I want to move to showing you a different way that you might want to consider for how to manage your Terraform projects, especially as your infrastructure and maybe your teams grow. So I'm going to show you how I chose to divide up my infrastructure here in two separate areas. Now you might not want to do this at all, or how you do this might be different. It might be kind of by business unit or something like that. Whereas I'm about to show you how to divide up your infrastructure by areas such as compute and network and data. Those are the three areas that we are going to deal with in uh, my case here and that's what I'm going to show you here. So in our current setup here, all of our infrastructure is kind of a mono repo. It's all under cloudcast.tf and that calls certain modules and those modules create all of our infrastructure. But what if instead you divide it up a few different ways so that you might have different teams work on different stuff or so that you might be able to update some items independently of others. And I'll show you what I mean with that a little bit later. But to show you what I'm going to do here in the next few videos is that we are going to divide our environments up by three different areas. Compute is going to be one. Network will be another. So compute will be like EC2 and if you use Lambda, something like that, anything that runs code, in other words. Network will be things like VPC and security groups and all that good stuff. And the last one will be data and I'll show you how to make an RDS database in Terraform here as well. So data, of course, will be things like database, Redis cache, things that hold state. I guess you can include S3 buckets in there as well, except I'm not going to create any S3 buckets in this course in particular. Now, each of these are going to be a whole separate state that can be planned and applied and their state will be saved in different buckets so they can be run independent of each other which means we have to make a few allowances, right? So for example, our compute stuff is going to need to use a data source to learn about the ID of the VPC we create in the network area. Okay, so why divide things up like this? So like I said, well, each will have its own state, right? So they can be planned and applied and ran separately, which is more complication. And on top of that is there's some duplication. So compute data and network are also going to be in our staging environment. And there's the possibility of some drift if they change a little bit. And that's actually okay. I want you to get used to the idea that with configuration languages, you don't need to keep everything dry, right? Don't repeat yourself. Doesn't always apply here because that causes a lot more pain in configuration languages than it might in real code bases. So we'll have some duplication, but that will allow us to do different things in different environments, which might actually be pretty powerful. And more importantly, we'll be able to make changes independent of uh, other things. So for example, if I update my EC2 server to be bigger or something like that, some other change, but at the same time, my RDS database in its maintenance period in AWS has auto updated itself so that the engine version is different. Terraform is going to say, oh, hey, I need to delete and recreate your RDS database because the one you defined in, in configuration is actually older than what's in existence. And I'm trying to create what you defined, so I have to delete this RDS database and recreate a new one with the older engine. And then that actually stops you from making your apply change to your EC2 instance that probably has nothing to do with that RDS instance. So then you're in a weird state where you have to update the RDS instance in Terraform so that it's set to the correct engine version so it doesn't try to delete your RDS database just so you can update your EC2 server. So you end up with weird things like that, and this gets around those type of issues. It also is good for different teams. So you might have a team that works on network and security stuff, and a different team that just has to spin up some servers and put them into a VPC that is someone else's responsibility to create. And of course, you might do it by like business unit, right? So your internal IT team might need some resources. Your finance team might need some other resources, you know, anything like that. So I think I've explained this enough for this video. In the next video, we'll see how to divide up all our stuff that we're creating here into network, data, and compute for production and staging. And then we'll see uh, what changes we need to make in order for these totally separate states to communicate with each other so that, for example, the compute section knows how to find the VPC created in the network section.